Parasitic Plant, Wikipedia Article Audio A parasitic plant is a plant that derives some or all of its nutritional requirements from another living plant. They make up about 1% of angiosperms and are in almost every biome in the world. All parasitic plants have modified roots, named haustoria, which penetrate the host plants, connecting them to the conductive system either the xylem, the phloem, or both. This provides them with the ability to extract water and nutrients from the host. Parasitic plants are classified depending on where the parasitic plant latches onto the host and the amount of nutrients it requires. Some parasitic plants are able to locate their host plants by detecting chemicals in the air or soil given off by host shoots or roots, respectively. About 4,500 species of parasitic plant in approximately 20 families of flowering plants are known. Classification Evolution of parasitic behavior Seed germination Seed dispersal Obstacles of attaching to a host Host range Aquatic parasitic plants Importance Plants parasitic on fungi Parasitic plants are characterized as follows. For hemiparasites, one from each of the three sets of terms can be applied to the same species, e.g. Hollow parasites are always obligate so only two terms are needed, e.g. Plants usually considered hollow parasites include broom rape, daughter, rafflesia, and the Heidner racii. Plants usually considered hemiparasites include Castileja, mistletoe, Western Australian Christmas tree, and yellow rattle. Parasitic behavior evolved in angiosperms roughly 12 to 13 times independently, a classic example of convergent evolution. Roughly 1% of all angiosperm species are parasitic, with a large degree of host dependence. The taxonomic family Orobonchaceae is the only family that contains both holoparasitic and hemiparasitic species, making it a model group for studying the evolutionary rise of parasitism. The remaining groups contain only hemiparasites or holoparasites. The evolutionary event which gave rise to parasitism in plants was the development of Haustoria. The first, most ancestral, Haustoria are thought to be similar to that of the facultative hemiparasites within Trifasaria. Lateral Haustoria develop along the surface of the roots in these species. Later evolution led to the development of terminal or primary house toria at the tip of the juvenile radical, seen in obligate hemiparasitic species within striga. Lastly, obligate holoparasitic behavior originated with the loss of the photosynthetic process, seen in the Orobanch genus. To maximize resources, many parasitic plants have evolved self-incompatibility to avoid parasitizing themselves. Others such as Trifasaria usually avoid parasitizing other members of their species, but some parasitic plants have no such limits. The albino redwood is a mutant sequoia sempervirens that produces no chlorophyll, they live on sugars from neighboring trees, usually the parent tree from which they have grown. Parasitic plants germinate in a variety of ways. These means can either be chemical or mechanical and the means used by seeds often depends on whether or not the parasites are root parasites or stem parasites. Most parasitic plants need to germinate in close proximity to their host plants because their seeds are limited in the amount of resources necessary to survive without nutrients from their host plants. Resources are limited due in part to the fact that most parasitic plants are not able to use autotrophic nutrition to establish the early stages of seeding. 
root parasitic plant seeds tend to use chemical cues for germination. In order for germination to occur, seeds need to be fairly close to their host plant. For example, the seeds of which weed need to be within 3 to 4 mm of its host in order to pick up chemical signals in the soil to signal germination. This range is important because Striga asiatica will only grow about 4 mm after germination. Chemical compound cues sensed by parasitic plant seeds are from host plant root exudates that are leached in close proximity from the host's root system into the surrounding soil. These chemical cues are a variety of compounds that are unstable and rapidly degraded in soil and are present within a radius of a few meters of the plant exuding them. Parasitic plants germinate and follow a concentration gradient of these compounds in the soil toward the host plants if close enough. These compounds are called stregolactones. Stregolactone stimulates ethylene biosynthesis in seeds causing them to germinate. There are a variety of chemical germination stimulants. Strigel was the first of the germination stimulants to be isolated. It was isolated from a non-host cotton plant and has been found in true host plants such as corn and millets. The stimulants are usually plant-specific. Examples of other germination stimulants include sorgolactone from sorghum, oroboncol, and alectrol from red clover, and 5-deoxystrigal from lotus japonicus. Strigolactones are apicarotenoids that are produced via the carotenoid pathway of plants. Strigolactones and mycorrhizal fungi have a relationship in which strigolactone also cues the growth of mycorrhizal fungus. Stem parasitic plants, unlike most root parasites, germinate using the resources inside their endosperms and are able to survive for some time. For example, the daughters drop their seeds to the ground, these may remain dormant for up to five years before they a host plant nearby. Using the resources in the seed endosperm, daughter is able to germinate. Once germinated, the plant has six days to find and establish a connection with its host plant before its resources run out. Daughter seeds germinate above ground and then the plant sends out stems in search of its host plant reaching up to 6 cm before it dies. It is believed that the plant uses two methods of finding a host. The stem detects its host plant's scent and orients itself in that direction. Scientists used volatiles from tomato plants to test the reaction of C. pentagona and found that the stem orients itself in the direction of the odor. Some studies suggest that by using light reflecting from nearby plants daughters are able to select host with higher sugar because of the levels of chlorophyll in the leaves. Once the daughter finds its host, it wraps itself around the host plant's stem. Using adventitious roots, the daughter taps into the host plant's stem with a hostorium, an absorptive organ within the host plant vascular tissue. Daughter makes several of these connections with the host as it moves up the plant. There are several methods of seed dispersal, but all the strategies aim to put the seed in direct contact with, or within a critical distance of, the host. The parasitic plant has many obstacles to overcome in order to attach to the host. Distance from the host and stored nutrients are only some of the problems, the host's defenses are an obstacle to overcome itself. The first hurdle is penetrating the host, the host has systems to reinforce the cell wall by protein cross-linking so that it stops the parasitic progress at the cortex of the host's roots. The second hurdle is the host's ability to secrete germination inhibitors. This prevents germination of the parasitic seed. The third hurdle is the host's ability to create a toxic environment for where the parasitic plant attaches to. 
The host secretes phenolic compounds into the apoplast that creates a toxic environment for the parasitic plant eventually killing it. The fourth hurdle is the host's ability to ruin the tubercle using gums and gels or injecting toxins into the tubercle. Some parasitic plants are generalists and parasitize many different species, even several different species at once. Dotter and red rattle are generalist parasites. Other parasitic plants are specialists that parasitize a few or even just one species. Beach drops is a root hollow parasite only on American beach. Rafflesia is a hollow parasite on the vine tetrastigma. Plants such as Pterospora become parasites of mycorrhizal fungi. There is evidence that parasites also practice self-discrimination, species of Trifasaria experience reduced hostorium development in the presence of other Trifasaria. Although, the mechanism for self-discrimination in parasites is not yet known. Parasitism also evolved within aquatic species of plants and algae. Parasitic marine plants are described as benthic, meaning that they are sedentary or attached to another structure. Plants and algae that grow on the host plant, using it as an attachment point are given the designation epiphytic, while not necessarily parasitic, some species occur in high correlation with a certain host species, suggesting that they rely on the host plant in some way or another. In contrast, endophytic plants and algae grow inside their host plant, these have a wide range of host dependence from obligate hollow parasites to facultative hemiparasites. Marine parasites occur as a higher proportion of marine flora in temperate rather than tropical waters. While no full explanation for this is available, Many of the potential host plants such as kelp and other macroscopic brown algae are generally restricted to temperate areas. Roughly 75% of parasitic red algae infect hosts in the same taxonomic family as themselves, these are given the designation adelphoparasites. Other marine parasites, deemed endozoic, are parasites of marine invertebrates and can be either hollow parasitic or hemiparasitic, some retaining the ability to photosynthesize after infection. Species within Orobonchaceae are some of the most economically destructive species on Earth. Species of Striga alone are estimated to cost billions of dollars a year in crop yield loss annually infesting over 50 million hectares of cultivated land within sub-Saharan Africa alone. Striga can infect both grasses and grains, including corn, rice, and sorghum, undoubtedly some of the most important food crops. Orobanch also threatens a wide range of important crops, including peas, chickpeas, tomatoes, carrots, and varieties of the genus Brassica. Yield loss from Orobanch can reach 100% and has caused farmers in some regions of the world to abandon certain staple crops and begin importing others as an alternative. Much research has been devoted to the control of Orobanch and Striga species, which are even more devastating in developing areas of the world, though no method has been found to be entirely successful. Some parasitic plants are destructive while some have positive influences in their communities. Some parasitic plants damage invasive species more than native species. This results in the reduced damage of invasive species in the community. In many regions, including the Nepal Eastern Himalayas, parasitic plants are used for medicinal and ritual purposes. About 400 species of flowering plants, plus one gymnosperm, are parasitic on mycorrhizal fungi. This effectively gives these plants the ability to become associated with many of the other plants around them. They are termed mycoheterotrophs. Some mycoheterotrophs are Indian pipe, snow plant, underground orchid, bird's nest orchid, 
and sugar stick. Within the taxonomic family Aracaceae, known for extensive mycorrhizal relationships, there are the monotropoids. The monotropoids include the genera Monoropa, Monotropsis, and Pterospora among others. Mycoheterotrophic behavior is commonly accompanied by the loss of chlorophyll. 1a. Obligate parasite A parasite that cannot complete its life cycle without a host, 1b. Facultative parasite A parasite that can complete its life cycle independent of a host, 2a. Stem parasite A parasite that attaches to the host stem, 2b. Root parasite A parasite that attaches to the host root, 3a. Hemiparasite a plant parasitic under natural conditions, but photosynthetic to some degree. Hemiparasites may just obtain water and mineral nutrients from the host plant, many obtain at least part of their organic nutrients from the host as well. 3b. Hollow parasite, a parasitic plant that derives all of its fixed carbon from the host plant. Commonly lacking chlorophyll, Hollow parasites are often colors other than green. Nutsia floribunda is an obligate root hemiparasite, Rhinanthus is a facultative root hemiparasite, Mistletoe is an obligate stem hemiparasite. Daughter is a stem hollow parasite, Hydnora species are root hollow parasites. Mistletoes cause economic damage to forest and ornamental trees. Rafflesia arnoldii produces the world's largest flowers at about 1 meter in diameter. It is a tourist attraction in its native habitat. Sandalwood trees have many important cultural uses and their fragrant oils have high commercial value. Indian paintbrush is the state flower of Wyoming. The oak mistletoe is the floral emblem of Oklahoma. A few other parasitic plants are occasionally cultivated for their attractive flowers, such as nudesia and broom rape. Parasitic plants are important in research, especially on the loss of photosynthesis during evolution. A few dozen parasitic plants have occasionally been used as food by people. Western Australian Christmas tree sometimes damages underground cables. It mistakes the cables for host roots and tries to parasitize them using its sclerenchymatic guillotine.